Now to James and Jennifer Crumbly. A Michigan judge sentenced them to 10 to 15 years behind bars. The first time parents have been held criminally responsible for a school shooting. We're going to speak with the lead prosecutor in the case after this from Trevor Ault. Good morning, Trevor. Good morning, George. So James and Jennifer Crumbly have spent almost two and a half years here behind bars at Oakland County Jail, but they will soon be transferred into prison. A judge handing down this unprecedented sentence after hearing from the families of those four children with the Crumbly son gunned down. This morning, James and Jennifer Crumbly soon headed to prison, sentenced to 10 to 15 years, the maximum possible as the first American parents convicted for their child school shooting. These convictions confirm repeated acts or lack of acts that could have halted an oncoming runaway train. The judge issuing a punishment far beyond the state sentencing guidelines, citing the catastrophic impact of the couple's actions and inactions. The Crumbleys bought their son the weapon used in the massacre, ignoring repeated warning signs of his declining mental health. Opportunity knocked over and over again, louder and louder, and was ignored. No, one's, no one answered, and these two people should have and sure didn't. The shooter killed four of his classmates, Madison Baldwin, Tate Meir, Justin Schilling, and Hannah St. Juliana, their families giving powerful impact statements in court Tuesday. This tragedy has taken hey, an incredible toll on our family. You failed as parents. The punish punishment that you face will never be enough. To me, that makes the maximum sentence being 15 years too short. Hannah didn't even have 15 years to live. The hearing was the first time James and Jennifer Crumbly had been together since their arrest almost two and a half years ago. The couple asking the court for leniency. I am sorry for your loss as a result of what my son did. We weren't perfect, but we loved our son and each other tremendously. I know we did our best. But the parents of the victims made it clear they hold James and Jennifer responsible, saying if they'd done their jobs as parents, these four students would still be alive. Instead of acknowledging any mistakes, they continue to show no remorse. When you texted, Ethan, don't do it. I was texting Madison, I love you, please call mom. And Jennifer Crumbly will now be sent to the only women's state prison in Michigan. It's not yet clear where James Crumbly will serve his time, but the judge indicated he and his son will be kept at separate facilities. George. Okay, Trevor, thanks. We're joined now by Karen McDonald, the Oakland County prosecutor. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning, Ms. McDonald. Hey, this is the first time, we know this is history, first time parents have been held criminally responsible. Do you think this is going to set a precedent, or do we just have exceptionally egregious facts here? We have exceptionally agree, agree, egregious facts. Uh, you know, I, I think to any extent that this sends a, a message or a precedent, I hope if it sets any precedent, it is that people pay more attention to securing their their firearms. Um, and, and we should be asking how somebody, particularly a minor, uh, got a hold of the uh, gun in a shooting. But in terms of holding parents responsible for the crimes of their, their kids, I, I'm just not so sure it's it's def, it's setting a precedent because or sending a message because most parents don't really need this message. It it really is um, it, coming from a place of just common sense. Right. Yeah. You've really stressed this point, and the judge did as well that this is not criminalizing bad parenting. No, it is not. Uh, I don't want to be responsible for all of the actions of my kids, and I know um, most Americans do not. Um, but in this case, the first question was, where did this this minor get a hold of this firearm that he used to gun down and murder four kids and injure seven others and terrorize hundreds of others? And that really just led to a set of facts that was just too extreme uh, to ignore and did reach that very high threshold of criminal gross negligence. We heard from one of the victim's parents there echoing a point you made in your in your statements saying there was no remorse or accountability from the Crumbleys. Do you still believe that? You know, it was disappointing. Nothing can bring these children back. And, you know, it's been a long, long journey with, with these parents. It's been two and a half years, and they've sat through many hearings and two long trials. And there's no closure to be had. 
However, there is an acknowledgement, and and they were at least satisfied with the with the sentence. And the judge really, you know, she she sat through those trials too, and and understood the the evidence. Um, but you know what victims really want, we we see in every day in every courtroom, is some acknowledgement and remorse. And what they heard was. Uh, we're really sorry what our what our son did, but we had nothing to do with it. Which just just is is really hard to take for 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 those parents and all parents. Uh, you purchased the gun four days earlier. You gave him access to it. You were called to the school. He wrote on a worksheet, "Help me. The world is dead. Blood everywhere." He told to get some help for him and never disclosed that the gun was purchased for him. Um, and there were just too many glaring facts here that just made it completely unacceptable that you never heard the words, I wish, you know, we're sorry we should have done this or we're sorry for doing this. It was very much, we're sorry that our son did this, but we had no idea. It's the school's fault, it's the prosecutor's fault. And look, there's a lot of blame to go around, but the actions of the parents reached the, well, the burden of criminal Yeah, criminal I want to get to that as well. We're seeing some civil lawsuits against the school. Do you think that those have a strong basis? I do. I absolutely do. I said from the beginning, I haven't ever been presented with evidence that would reach a criminal charge um, for anybody in the school. But I do think that, uh, and I'm committed to helping these parents, um, there's just things that the, have not been um, handled. And, and what I mean by that is they're just, there's just not enough transparency. They want to know what happened and they want to know how it happened. And so I, I think there's there's a long way to go in that. And and on that point, you know, this this isn't really the end here. It's a, it's a beginning of myself and others. I, I formed a commission to address gun violence. We need to talk about gun violence, which is the number one cause of death for children in this country, uh, like a public health crisis, because that's what it is. <clears throat> and access to weapons is very important and it's critical. But it's not the only thing. It's not one thing we're going to do to prevent gun violence. We need to go out way upstream. We need to talk about um, what, how to prevent someone from being in crisis and then what to do once that happens. And so uh, we're going to release recommendations about that next month um, from experts all over the country. We really, you know, it's tragic to me that we have allowed this number one cause of death to be uh, firearms for children and we've done almost absolutely nothing except argue about guns. No question about that. Final question, any concern this verdict can be overturned on appeal? I'm sure they will appeal just like over 90% of all uh, individuals who are convicted through a jury trial. Um, we were painstakingly careful um, about making sure that we had a good solid case and, um, and we're confident that it will be affirmed. Karen McDonald, thanks for joining us this morning.